Hey there, Wayne Jennings here with another action camera review. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the XTU S3. Now, just to let you know, the folks at XTU sent me this camera courtesy. Uh, I didn't pay for it, and they're not paying me to do this review. All the opinions are mine and mine alone. But let me just say, uh, it seems to be a pretty impressive little camera. Like most action cameras out there today, it'll shoot 4K video, It'll do time-lapse, slow motion. You can get still images up to 20 megapixels in size. But this camera has a few unique features that I really, really like. First off, the camera is waterproof without a housing, just as it is, down to a depth of five meters. So whether you're snorkeling or you're out in ski conditions or rain, it'll stay dry and waterproof. Another nice thing, this camera has dual display screens. I mean, most cameras have a screen on the back, which this one does, but it also has a little screen on the front, which is great for doing selfies or composing your shot. You can see exactly what the camera sees. The other nice thing about this camera, it has a microphone input jack, which should allow you to get better audio. The XTU S3 action camera will record videos in resolutions of 4K at 30 frames per second, 2.7K at 30 frames per second, high definition 1440 at 30 or 60 frames per second, 1080 at 30, 60 and 90 frames per second, and 720 at 30, 60 and 120 frames per second. It will shoot still photos up to 20 megapixels in size. It weighs in at about 4.2 ounces, that's 120 grams, and it retails online for around 139 US dollars. Now, before we get to all the technical stuff, let's have a look at some of the video captured with this little camera. The XTU S3 camera kit is well equipped with all the accessories you see here. Now, the camera itself is waterproof down to a depth of 5 meters, but if you want to go deeper, well, they supply this waterproof housing, which is rated to a depth of 40 meters. It comes with a rechargeable lithium ion battery rated at 1,350 milliamp hours and there's a micro USB cable for charging. There's a nice assortment of mounting hardware and tripod adapters, as well as flat and curved mounting plates with extra adhesive tape. You get straps, zip ties, and a lanyard to help secure your camera. There is a foam windscreen and a plug-in external microphone. You get a couple of optical lens protectors, a two-function remote control, a very detailed full-color user manual, and it even ships with a lens cleaning cloth. The XTU S3 is a very rugged looking camera and it is waterproof 
down to a depth of 5 meters without a housing. The camera comes with this rubber lens protector, which is a really nice idea to help protect the lens when you're not shooting. There is a view screen on the front as well as the back. On the bottom of the camera, we have a quarter inch tripod socket. And beside that is the battery compartment door. To open that, you have to kind of push this button and slide it. And it's got a metal hinge down there and a nice big rubber gasket to keep moisture out. And inside there, you'll find your battery and your micro SD card slot. On this far side, there's another little compartment here. Again, you got to push the button and slide it. It's a bit stiff, but it is designed to keep the water out. Again, there's a gasket there. And inside we have our micro SD port and our HDMI port. Above that little door, there's a tiny speaker. On the far side of the camera is your main power switch. And on the top of the camera is your shutter release. Beside that is a mode button and there's a little tiny microphone between those two. Now we'll just power it on here. You just push and hold the power button for a second. And this is a touch screen. And it's very easy to use once you figure out what everything does. But basically I'll show you if you swipe down from the top, there's like a menu where you can turn the Wi-Fi on, turn the remote control on, lock the camera, activate voice control and power it off. There's a button on the side here. If you hit that, basically it pulls up a menu of all the images and videos that are on your memory card. And you'll notice down here, there is a little um, video camera icon. That means it's in video mode right now. Let's just hit that and you'll see. So that's video mode and there's the different segments. So normal video, time-lapse video, slow motion, quick stories, underwater or car looping. There's also, if you hit photo, you can go in and set things for like normal photo, time-lapse photo, self-timer, burst photo, long exposure, or shoot raw video, or sorry, raw photos. So let's just go back to uh, video mode here and we'll set it for normal video. And once you're in the video mode here at the bottom, you'll see it shows a resolution. Well, if you hit that, you get the menu where you can go in and make all kinds of changes. Uh, let's start with the resolution there. It's just a matter of scrolling through the different resolutions. So find your one you like, hit it, hit that button and go back. So now we're set in this case, 2.7K at 30 frames. So there are a lot of options in here. This one called segment, it will allow you to shoot continuously or break it down into small segments. You can turn the audio on or off, uh, the video encoder, you can actually shoot in H24 or the more efficient H265. You can turn the lens distortion on or off. There's a gyroscope for steadying the lens. You can change the metering mode, change the exposure. This is a really nice feature here, the shutter. Most of these little action cameras it's completely automatic. But on this one, if you hit shutter, you can go in and you can actually select the shutter speed you want and preset it, which is a great option. And there's, you know, other settings, the ISO, the white balance, sharpness, compression, things like that. So a very extensive menu. Of course, there's a sub menu where you can go in and change things like turning the sounds on or off or the auto power off, setting the Wi-Fi, formatting your card, uh, changing the language, uh, flipping the screen upside down, turning the LEDs on or off. Uh, there's a grid you can turn on or off, things like that. So it's a very, very extensive menu. But the nice thing about this camera is it has the dual view screens. Now, right now the back one is on. To get to the front one, you push and hold this M or mode button for a second and then the front screen flips on. And as you can see, there I am. So it's a great way if I want to set up my shot and compose the shot and I'll see exactly what the camera sees. So it's a really nice feature having that view screen in the front. This camera has a feature called electronic image stabilization that's turned off right now. I'll just turn around and get a shot as I'm walking forward down this forest path. You can see it's a little bumpy. So that's with the image stabilization turned off. So what I'll do is I'll go back, retrace my steps, turn it on, and you can see if it makes a difference. So now the image stabilization has been turned on. I'm walking down that same trail. We'll just turn the camera around. There we are, there's the shot going forward down the trail. 
and will come back to me. So as you can see with the electronic image stabilization on, it definitely smooths things out. This camera has an electronic zoom function. You just hit the little plus button and the camera creeps in a little bit each time up to 10 times. However, I find as you get near the end of the zoom range, the image looks a little bit too soft for my liking. This camera has an extreme wide angle lens, which gets a lot in your image. However, it tends to distort things somewhat. If you notice the horizon behind me, it tends to curve down at the sides. Well, this camera has a feature called lens distortion correction. And we turn that on, it tends to level things out, giving them more of a normal appearance. So let's turn that on and you can see for yourself if it makes a difference. All right, so now I've turned the lens distortion correction function on. And as you can see by the horizon behind me, things are a lot more level. Time-lapse video sequences can be recorded by exposing a single frame of video every half, one, two, five, 10, 30, or 60 seconds. Still photos can be captured in sizes of 3, 5, 8, 12, 16, or 20 megapixels. There are settings for self-timer, burst photo, long exposure, and raw photos. This camera can also be used as a dash cam. There is a loop recording function allowing you to record video segments 1, 3, 5, or 10 minutes in length. And the other nice thing is if your car has a USB port, which most new cars do, you can just get a USB cable, plug it in. You don't even need a battery in the camera, but you can power it from a cable for a long road trip. That's a great way to keep recording. The other nice thing is this camera has a voice control function. Again, it's uh, very convenient and safe when you're driving. Uh, just by using your voice, you can have the camera start and stop recording video. You can have it take still pictures. You can turn the view screen on or off, or you can turn the Wi-Fi on or off, all with voice commands. Some of the settings you can alter on this camera include white balance, which can be set to auto, daylight, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent low, or fluorescent high. ISO can be set to auto, 100, 200, 400, 800, or 1600 ISO. There are metering mode selections of center, average, or spot, and exposure can be altered up or down by two stops in half-stop increments. A few other features of this camera include an inverse function that flips the video when the camera is mounted upside down. There is a handy grid overlay to help you frame and compose your shots, and there is a face detection setting to help achieve accurate focus. Now, when it comes to audio recorded on the XTU S3, I was a little disappointed with the sound that the camera records with its built-in microphone, which is located on the top here. It was extremely low. I could barely hear it. Even when I yelled, it was a very, very low level. That was disappointing. However, the one redeeming feature is this camera comes with an external microphone. It's got a little USB plug, which you plug in, and it allows you to get very good sound. So I'll just give you a demonstration here. I just plug it into the uh, USB port, like so. And then once it's in there, I'll just uh, hit record on here. And point it at me. And so now we'll do a little test. Now what you're hearing is the sound picked up by that microphone and the microphone's kind of neat because uh, as you can see it is uh, bendable so you can point it forward you know if you're doing a vlog thing where your camera's pointed at you or you can point it backwards if you're you know walking down a trail and you want to talk about what you see in front of you that way the microphone is pointing back at you so this helps you get really good audio with this camera Unfortunately, the built-in mic is not so good. Here, I'll just unplug this and 
And now here's a sample of the sound recorded directly into the camera, and you can barely hear me. Even when I yell, it's hard to hear the audio recorded directly into that camera. So you see the sound recorded directly into the camera is very, very low. Uh, the nice thing though, because it takes an external microphone, I was able to use this. This is an uh, external microphone I bought off Amazon. It's made by Akaso. Uh, and it uses a much longer cable. It's like two meters, almost two meters long, which just gives you more options recording audio. So we'll plug that one in here. Just plug it in. And the nice thing about this is then you can get further away from the camera. So it's plugged in. We'll turn this one on. And uh, so there. So I'm uh, recording audio right now. Um, but the nice thing about this is I can be a lot further away and still get good audio. And of course, I can turn my back to the camera and still get good audio because the sound is being recorded on this microphone and not on the camera mic. So that's a nice option with this camera. You can plug in a compatible microphone that has a longer cable like this one and that way you can get good sound great for doing interviews or, or with someone who's further away from the camera slow motion sequences can be recorded at various resolutions and frame rates this is 720 resolution at 60 frames per second and here is 720 at 120 frames per second. This is 1080 at 60 frames per second. And this is 1080 shot at 90 frames per second. You can also shoot 1440 video in a four by three aspect ratio at 60 frames per second. You can operate this camera from a distance using the included remote control and it's really simple, there are just two buttons on there. If you hit this one, the red LED lights up, the camera begins recording video until you hit it again, and then it stops. If you hit this bottom button, it will switch from video to photo mode and snap a picture. But in order to get the best control of your camera, you wanna download this app, it's called XTU Go and it uses Wi-Fi to connect your camera to your device. As you see, there's the image that the camera sees. And if you flip it sideways, you get a nice big image as well. Now you can go in and make all kinds of changes. Right now it's on the video mode. If I hit that button, I can go in and change things. It's on normal video, but I can set it for time lapse and slow motion and things like that. Uh, basically, if I hit this button down here, the camera will start recording until I hit that again to stop it. And of course you can change that to uh, photo mode and do all the same with photos. There's a little icon up here which allows you to go in and make all kinds of changes. Uh, in this case, in the video mode, I can change the resolution, uh, turn the audio on or off, change the video codec, put on the lens distortion correction, the gyroscope, metering mode, white balance, basically anything you can do from the camera, you can do with this remote. And of course, you can also go in, if you hit this button down here, and see all the images and video that are on that memory card. They are now displayed on your phone and you can just kind of scroll through and find an image and play it back or view it. In conclusion, the XTU S3 is not a bad little camera. It's certainly not perfect. Uh, I was most uh, upset with the fact that the audio recorded into this camera is extremely low. Now, to be fair, I have seen some other reviews out there where the audio is actually pretty good. So perhaps I got a faulty camera, I'm not really sure. Uh, but for good audio, I had to plug in a microphone. As far as uh, video resolution, everything looked really good, with the exception of 720. That was just too soft for my liking. And um, I got some weird frame rates. They were really odd, like I would set the camera for 30 frames per second, and I would get things like 30.86, 30.19, 30.46, all these really bizarre frame rates. Now, my editing software allows me to go in and adjust that so I could get exactly 30. Uh, so it wasn't a big issue, but just something to keep in mind that might be an issue for you. Other than that, overall, you know, considering the price point and the features in this camera, not a bad little action camera.